Hello, everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Actually, welcome to my laundry room. Yeah, it's come to this, unfortunately. It seems like it's the only way for me to get the next piece of content out because my kid is in the bedroom and I live in a one bedroom apartment. So the only room in the whole place where I can go talk somewhat openly and loud is my laundry room. And the lighting in here is really, really bad. <laughs> so um, this is where it's going to have to be tonight. I am determined to really grow my YouTube channel. That's how bad I am trying to record a video without interruption from my child or my job during the day. And yeah, so let's get with it. I really want to talk to you about something today. Hold on, let me get my notes. <laughs> I am going through another transition in my life and I can feel it. You know, you just, you feel it. My last transition was, you know, started uh, almost five and a half years ago. I don't know why, but it seems like for women, at least for me, that when we feel the, the need, the desire, like we feel it in our bones, like it's time to change something, right? In our lives, it always stems around relationships. I heard something the other day or last week. I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, y'all, while I'm working. I also um, have been reading a lot. And I just, I love hearing other people's stories, opinions, how they handle things. And something I heard in a video pretty sure I heard it in a video. I was talking about relationships and it basically made a statement that, you know, um, a lot of people can usually handle issues in all aspect of their lives. Meaning, you know, we could slow something down. We can cut strangers off. Um, we can learn to tune out our coworkers, but when it comes to our loved ones, the people closest to us, usually meaning the relationship that we're in, it is really hard to just cut that off, right? And that's how powerful relationships are with people. We could be quick to clean out negative friends. I know family is a lot harder. It's the only other type of toxic relationships. I've heard a lot of people say it is really hard to just cut people off in your family. But the, it's the relationship, like the relationship that you're having with someone that you, you, you know, you, you loved or, or you, you do love. Maybe you still love them. Who knows? I personally have always had difficulty uh, usually separating with people that I was in a relationship with even if it was a short-term relationship. Now, as I get older, I tend to become a lot better at processing things, right? Like why it failed. But believe me, there's still the emotions that come behind trying to make sense of what went wrong. And in the end, you kind of know what went wrong. But unless two people had a very respectful, respectful breakup and discussion about that, it's always still going to be confusing when it ends. I've only had a very small handful of men in my lives that have ended things respectfully. Okay. Like respectfully. I have had a, I have in my twenties, a very conscious coupling breakup where we still lived together for another two months and we literally told each other we still loved each other so much that we were going to honor every time that we spent together and 
to where we were still friends after. I've had another relationship. And of course, these two I'm talking about first were, were long-term relationships. But the other one that I had was I, I dated a therapist for a year and a half. So obviously <laughs> that was a sane breakup. Um, even though I was very upset and crying and so confused, it just came out of nowhere. It was very respectful. And, you know, till this day, when I've seen that person or communicated with them, like once every two to three years since, you can just tell there's that respect they, that they still have, right? For the relationship that, that they had with you. And I kind of forgot what my video was about. <laughs> I kind of forgot what my video was about. Yeah. Okay. So this is really hard, right? Recording YouTube. You know why? I, I, I could be a rambler. Seriously. Sorry to take a quick break to make some adjustments. So, okay. Back to my story. I just feel that my, now that I've gotten older, this second transition that I'm going through. So the first transition I went through was definitely getting over the person, the family I thought we were going to be, um, everything. Like the fact that he pursued me three times, like it was, it was me a lot getting over the person and then having to go through child custody and then having to just become unbitter being a single mom and feeling like it's not fair and the fact that I moved for this person. So yeah, it, it, it was a lot of stopping being pissed off and bitter and until I finally saw the light, right? What did Alicia contribute to the problem? And of course, realizing my power, once I started to recognize the red flags, read my old journals, and I was like, I was kind of, it was weird. It's, please comment below if anyone's had the same experience. But once I started discovering the red flags, to me, it was, I would have these excite, these aha moments. And it would be like, Oh my God, I knew, I knew because I wrote it in my journal, you know, nine months before a breakup. Like I knew something was off. I knew this and that didn't seem right, whatever. And when I did that, I got actually, I got pretty excited because I felt like I was, you know, discovering my own treasure, so to speak. So anyways, um, this, and then of course I, I was single for almost five years. So here comes this other new relationship. Didn't last for very long. I guess you could say whether it was long or short, I didn't really look back and feel like I didn't ever get to go deep with these people. Like real, like the kind of, the kind of closeness that I have been looking for again in my life with someone. Uh, part of it is feeling safe talking to them. With both of them, it was very much narcissistic characteristics. Like you could say, I love blue and they would get pissed and you're like, what, what did I do? Like, what did I say? You know what I mean? So yes, both of those relationships were very much narcissistic characteristics, narcissistic traits. And I guess that is why I have felt after those, both those transitions or I'm sorry, after both of those breakups, I feel like I need to go through another transition. And of course this transition that I'm craving is growth. And it usually first stems from, I want to learn everything. I want to, I want to relive, rediscover everything about the person to figure out, oh, I could have, you know, I could have backed, I could have stopped right there. I could have backed out of that right there. Right. It's like realizing that you actually had so many times to exit, like so many times I thought about 
and told my friends, I think I need to break up with this guy. And I didn't, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, that was my intuition. That was my intuition. And I was, I was ignoring it because I was being love bombed like crazy anyways. And my whole point of the story is I understand why for a lot of us, the only way to change your whole life in every other sector is going to be after a really bad relationship. A lot of it stems from wanting to protect yourself. So part of me wants to grow and learn and grow so that I can recognize this again in the next person so that I can avoid them even quicker. And the second part of it is, you know, just saying, wow, like that was a really crappy relationship I was in, like really, really bad. Like even though it was four months, it was, it was bad. Like it was two and a half months of fighting. <laughs> and uh, because the, the person for the most part, the person was starting stuff with me pretty routinely every week. It was what now? And I, I, I started to become toxic at the end because it's like, I felt like I was in a war zone. I felt like I was trying to, first I was trying to work with the enemy and then I was trying to, uh, like work with the enemy. And then I was like, I guess you could say putting my shield up and that did a little bit like that got that person to kind of back off a little bit. And then it seemed like in the end it was, Oh man, it was like, I was full on trying to protect myself to the point that I became toxic back because I felt like it was the only way to try to establish my boundaries and tell this person, like, get the, oh, like, stop you're doing right. The transition and growth that I'm feeling that I'm craving is it, it feels good. It feels big. Like it's, I've already been establishing some much better habits. I love feeling totally single, totally okay. At least not yet. I'm not feeling, I really haven't felt lonely. Y'all, I have so many amazing friends, people that have known me for years. I'm constantly reading about how to improve myself. I'm watching YouTube videos all the time to the point that I now want to make these videos to anyone else out there you know, maybe you need to find someone that's over 40 talking about this in their laundry room because <laughs> they just want to get this message out to any woman or man who's watching and just fucking sick and tired. You're just sick and tired of the shitty people and the shitty relationships to the point that you realize that you need to make a big change in your life, you know? And even though I know, I know myself, I'm confident in myself. I have friends that give me feedback, right? So I don't need someone else's validation. I don't need to um, ask for attention. I don't, I have a pretty decent amount of good self-esteem. I mean, I'm right here on YouTube with no barely any makeup on or old hours old makeup sitting here in my laundry room because I don't care if someone judges me or not for having some fancy schmancy setup. And believe me, look at some of my old videos. I did have the YouTube camera and the ring light, which I still have everything, but I realized it was, it was holding me back from wanting to put out content that was really going to reach people. And I mean, you know, like in the heart reach people. Okay. So for those of you watching, it is normal that when you want to seek change in your life, that it's stemming from losing some sort of relationship. It could even be a friendship, but for the most part, for the most part, I really believe that I really believe that people usually become either really toxic after a relationship or they become a much better person from a relationship. And I really believe it all stems from a relationship. And that's because having a partner in your life is the closest bond that you can 
really form with someone, you know, besides God or whatever God that you praise to, right? But your partner is like supposed to be everything. The love, the sex, the companionship, the support. So yeah, it, it's it's hard. And that's why for me, at least, again, even though this last one was four months, I look back and I'm like, <laughs> oh, what the hell was I thinking on so many levels? Therefore, I'm now going through another transition where I have to remember that I I just can't. I cannot lower my standards again. Like I knew where I was going, where I'm headed. And I'm saying that not to be egotistical or anything, but considering that we must all be honest with ourselves when we're looking at people, picking people to date, right? You really have to be honest with yourself. This is why as I get older and I remember all all the years hearing women say I want an older man who makes this much money and xyz and it's very much on a superficial level yes but there is some truth to these things meaning a woman needs to pick a man that she knows is right for her, right? And I used to not care about money or anything because I have my own money. I always felt, you know, in my heart that if I make a life with someone, then ideally we would be putting all of our sources of income together and having an amazing family and maybe business or our own businesses. And I never cared to look at what men did or didn't have. And I realized I attracted a lot of men that were way beneath my level. I'm talking lives at home with their parents. <laughs> um, doesn't own a car. <laughs> and it's taken me a long time, y'all. It's taken me a long, hard time look at my life to go, I got to stop this. <laughs> I have to level up what I'm doing and the person that I'm going to be with the next time that I'm with anybody. I've got to level up, at, you know, at, at least on a couple of the ways that it didn't pan out. And I know that, you know, and I, again, I'm not saying that money really is everything when you're picking a guy. Um, or the career or whatnot, but I've, I've attracted some people that are just not, not doing what I'm doing. They're not working on what I'm working on. So with that being said, it's okay if a relationship is kind of forcing you to take a big look at yourself, Right. To be like, pretty much like, what the fuck? <laughs> I am so tired. You have to hit rock bottom. Okay. The last relationship I had five and a half years ago, that was my rock bottom relationship. Now, the good thing is because I did so much processing in that relationship, y'all, I didn't, I didn't, I guess you could say I kind of tried to date, but I was, I was using all my dating probably for validation, probably to communicate, probably for practice. And it was really scary, really scary for me. I went through three solid years, okay, as a new mom. And even though, like, I was, I had guys or men that I kind of knew of that was kind of coming out of the woodwork, basically promising that they would treat me amazing. I was scared to death. I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> I was like, no, thank you. I didn't even have sex for three years. I look back and I'm just like, I didn't have sex for three years. 
I was single. And because I processed so much of it, so, so, so much of it, I, it took a long time to process that. Now, the good thing is because I went through such an extraordinary process of change, I processed the relationship. I left no stoned unturned. I watched video after video. I did online therapy. I read books about narcissists. I even read a, a couple of my own self improvement books for, for me. And I still thought I had it all down. <laughs> then I had to find, you know, I wouldn't say find, but then I had to eventually get into the next relationship where I was going to learn an even bigger lesson. The good thing is this shorter one that I had recently, um, I process things really fast right? Because you could have a four month relationship with someone and be left fucked up for years if you didn't process it. And I remember, you know, telling two of my best friends, like, I can just, I can feel how different, even though I was processing and I did go through my sad moments and I was pissed because the way it ended was just not in adult manner by that person. I glowed up. I grew up over the past five years and I just thought I should never have to go through what I went through with my last relationship. Definitely don't want that again. I truly believe what they say. When you level yourself up, you're going to attract those type of men or women in your lives. Like hands down, y'all. If you are watching this video, that means you have acknowledged that you need some sort of change in your life. You, you're you hearing yourself right now. You have acknowledged that you need change. And let me tell you, change does not have to be fearful. And nobody has to know that you're going through a, a change either. Nobody has to know that you're doing the deep work. Now, naturally over time, it will show people will start to see something's different about her or him. If you're a guy watching this, embrace it, embrace the change and just straight up enjoy the process. Sometimes it can be painful, but it's needed y'all. You have to go through that pain to feel it so hard that you're just sick and tired of feeling that way. And a lot of times it's not even about changing anything about yourself, but it's changing what you're choosing in your life. You're choosing the wrong people or choosing the wrong friends or choosing the wrong job. As I got older, I started recognizing the signs in everything. In 2020, I lost my job twice. I lost my dream job as a mortgage assistant at the time, it was to be mortgage assistant for two years so I can become a loan originator and learn everything from the ground up while I'm getting paid and then go make bank. <laughs> and I lost my job, you know, within a month, the pandemic, the whole world had shut down. Half the company was being let go. And later on that year, I got another job at another mortgage company and about two and a half months of training sort of for a little bit of a different position. They let me go out of the blue, like out of the blue. It was such, it was the, it was what I call the worst uh, job breakup in history. <laughs> My own team lead, who's a real estate broker, a mortgage broker, a grown ass man couldn't even tell me why he was letting me go. He was beating around the bush and here I am like on the verge of tears. Just let me know what I, let me know why you're letting me go. And the reason why is because if you tell me why you're letting me go, I can, at least I'll know. Okay. And then I'll just turn around and become better because that's the way that I work personally. Me, if someone tells me you're doing this, you're doing that. And they point it out and I acknowledge that I could use improvement in that area. Guess what I do? 
I make improvements in that area. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't, they don't work the way that I do. So I can only do that so much. I mean, at some point, if you feel like someone's gaslighting you to believing that you're just this god awful person, yeah, that's when I had, that's when I started to realize like, okay, this is just turning into a big circus. Like, no matter what I do right, there's always another wrong around the corner. <laughs> so... Again, change doesn't have to necessarily be about changing your looks, changing your personality. It doesn't have to be about like, go make more money because it's not always going to be the solution to everyone's problem. A lot of times it could just be changing what you're choosing to do every day, to eat every day, to drink every day. Today, I'm on day two of no caffeine it's crazy because let's see it's almost 10 o'clock p.m. and I'm wide awake I haven't had caffeine for two days not even caffeinated hot tea so I'm already making changes that aren't changing my personality but I'm changing choices but in return making a different choice about something that I'm even physically consuming is already changing me as a person I'm able to be up now. I am up instead of normally I'd be asleep. So here I am up recording this YouTube video, which is why once I set this up in my laundry room and my, ch my child knocked out, I was like right over to the laundry room, set up the camera or my phone, set up my little, my little video stand. And I'm like, that's it. I'm going to do this. I don't care. It, not every video is going to be like this either. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll like these videos where I'm like half wearing no makeup, but I'm a real person. Y'all see me in plenty of other videos where I'm all dolled up. It, w it will be fine. Go watch some of my old videos. So no judgment. <laughs> Maybe one day when I get to quit my job, you will see me in a much better capacity. But until then, have a good night.